let's talk a little bit about the $15 minimum wage because this is something that's just um, infuriating me. I, I, we don't have a clip of this, but I was watching CNBC yesterday uh, and I saw uh, an expert, economic expert talk about how we really need to ease into the $15 minimum wage. We just have to like, it has to be over time. I'm like, mother effers. First off, $15 minimum wage was chosen to fight for 15 because of alliteration, not because of some sort of like economic projection. Um, true story. But also it started 10 years ago. I mean, I don't have to tell you guys as you know it, but this is a fight that started 10 years ago. It is way what it should be. Uh, nobody in America can live off of $15 an hour and pay for a one bedroom apartment, uh, at least pre-COVID, who knows now. Um, why, why have we like, I mean, what could we possibly do at this point to move Democrats, mainstream centrist Democrats into understanding how like, sur this is the most basic negotiation. This is the most basic negotiation, but it's not working. It's tax, something, the tactics need to, to, I mean, something needs to shift. A run. <laughs> Anybody jump no, in, come I on. Know. I mean, look, there's nothing to say. It's sort of Democrats gonna Democrat. It's Lucy and the you football, know. sort of shame on us. As Bernie would put it, if you don't ask for the whole loaf, you're just gonna get crumbs. Why are we giving things away before people are voting already? Um, I mean, just the last couple of weeks, we've really seen the Biden administration cave on a lot of its promises, a lot of its more progressive promises, and seem to adopt negotiation tactics that are just not going to get people the goods. So yeah. all I have to say is Democrats are making the same mistakes that they always make, and that's sad. I mean, it's, it's becoming exhausting. I mean, we the fact that we're speechless because we've been complaining about this for the last, you know, since Obama. Um, I mean, with this, we have literally the same people. It's the same, same cabinet set, making the same decisions. It's sort of, it's a little crazy. You know? it's, <laughs> like, it's, it's totally crazy. crazy. I mean, I, I just like what's so, I'm just furious that we didn't go bigger. Like, if you, okay, if you're gonna get crumbs, why not go bigger? Why, why can't Bernie Sanders step up and say like $30 minimum wage or $25, I'm a $30 gal? Um, if you're I just making it up based on how it sounds, I think low 20s to me, messaging wise, sounds something like 23, <laughs> something below 25 sounds right. But yeah. I don't think that's a great idea. I think it should be based on something realistic. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but Natalie, I mean, it, it, this is this to me did not seem like it was going to be as much of a fight as it ended up being. We're in a pandemic. The economy is crashing still. We still don't have a good sense of it. Uh, it's been on the platform for the last two cycles uh, with a fight. But, you know, almost every single union in America uh, that gives to Democrats supports a fifteen dollars minimum wage. Uh, Biden, uh, you know, he 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 acknowledged he needed to win with Latinos, and they've been a big part of the fight for fifteen. Why? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that this issue, uh, along with a couple others, uh, most gallingly illustrate whose side the Democrats really are on. At the end of the day, um, I mean, this should be such a gimme. Right, I, I, like fifteen dollars an hour, which already, as you have already noted, is lower than a living wage. Something that people have been talking about for years. That's enormously successful. That's already been passed in a couple of states without the you know negative boogeymen that they're always warning about. I mean, and now with the unified uh, you know Senate House presidency, they can do it in budget reconciliation. The fact that they are not absolutely jumping at this chance is absolutely infuriating, absolutely galling. And the next time someone tells you that Democrats aren't on the side of capital, you can laugh in their face. Well, and I'm curious I, that's to not see, an like, answer. That's just- <laughs> No, I think you're right. I think, and, and, but it was, it's so interesting. It's like, okay, obviously there's a ton of interests that are giving to the Democratic Party, but I wanna know who's calling. I wanna know who's calling these senators, which industries, which specific mm. lobbyists are the ones. Like, I don't believe all capital that gives the Democratic Party is this effing dumb. I just don't. If Florida can pass a $15 minimum wage with Ron DeSantis and all the right wing and small business you know, organizations and lobbyists fighting against it, then I'd like to understand who specifically is doing this. Who are they listening to? Are they just the usual actors, or is there is there a coalition? And I think we should start highlighting them. I don't know. You think about the industries that pay. You know, I, I mean, like chambers of commerce, massive, uh, you know, restaurant and food service and grocery uh, mm -hmm. business owner conglomerations. I don't know the names off the top of my head, but it's not too mysterious who's no. against the minimum wage. It's, you know, the people's 
bosses and the owners who whose bottom line would be mildly threatened by paying everyone a minimum wage. Um, you know, those are the people who are against it. And frankly, those people are very politically connected and influential. We'll see how it's, you know, we all know it's bad politics. We'll see how bad it is. But my instinct, and I'm sure y'all share it, is that this is the first sort of paved mile of the road towards uh, a Republican majority in the House in 2022. Uh, you know, the rest being exactly when those checks arrive on people's doorsteps, which if it's not to the middle of March is a problem also. But these very popular with the people and not with some of the lobbyist policies are the gimmies, are yes. the kind of freebies that Democrats should be scooping off the trees and scooping out of the streams in these first few months. Uh, and the fact that we're not here doesn't give me hope for anything being accomplished, you know, even... It's hard to know what Biden thinks his health care for Obama is, right? If he does, and we were talking about this on the show last night, if he does subscribe to the unfortunate notion that political capital is something that you spend once rather than something you use to get gain momentum, kind of FDR style, uh, what does he want to spend it on so bad? And it's just not really clear. Not taking children out of cages. We know that one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, I mean, that's great. Just, just to make a clear, to clarify it, you're meaning that, that Obama put all of his energy into Obamacare and, yeah. and then everything else kind of died as a result, uh, with the exception of a few things, because that was the fight for the next 10 years. So, uh, well, maybe all it's near a tandem, guys. That, maybe yeah. it's near a tandem. I think that might be <laughs> it. Thanks for watching and listening to The Nomi Key Show. But remember to click like and subscribe on YouTube and please share on social media. If you're not already a patron, please join us for as low as $5 a month on patreon.com slash The Nomi Key Show for early and special content. That investment makes a huge difference. We are not corporate media raking in the dough. It's really you guys that are keeping us going. So please consider being a patron. And to our current patrons, thank you so much. We are incredibly grateful to you. We also now have swag. So check us out on the to get your mugs, your totes, and your stickers.